Hi everyone and welcome back to the Boy Step video series with the Canter Coach. This week we are going to be talking about how to canter a Catholic wedding. Let's get started. Okay, so as canters, sometimes we are asked to canter special occasion masses. This is outside of the normal masses on Sunday, and they can include weddings and funerals, holy days of obligation, or just special event masses of celebration. Now, today I wanted to cover how to canter a Catholic wedding. I get this question sometimes from people on how it differs from normal Sunday mass and some tips and tricks on how to do a really great job. So we are going to cover the order of the Mass today and give you a few tips and tricks. Okay, so as we prepare to canter for a Catholic wedding, it's really great to be there most likely 30 to 45 minutes before the actual wedding starts. The reason for this is that if you have instrumentalists or if you have anybody else you're singing with or working with, and you want to rehearse or go through anything, it's good to be there a little bit beforehand. Additionally, you will most likely be singing in the prelude music. There's usually about 20 to 30 minutes of prelude music as people are coming in and sitting down and getting re ready to celebrate the Mass, and you will most likely be partaking in, in performing for that. So it is good to be there about 30 to 45 minutes ahead of time. To get ready for that. The prelude music will most likely be a mix of both instrumental and vocal. Typically these are pieces that the bride and groom have picked out specifically that are really meaningful to them. Uh, wedding hymns, there are specific sections in the hymnal that are labeled weddings. So there are specific hymns that we would sing for weddings as opposed to funerals. We'll talk about that in another video but most likely you'll be singing two, maybe three pieces even before the wedding starts. So that's something that you would prepare with your music director or that will be indicated for you through the bride and groom. After the prelude comes the processional. This begins with the grandmothers and the mothers of both the bride and groom being escorted down the aisle. Sometimes, of course, this includes other family members, but mostly it is honoring the mothers. And this is a great time to sing something similar to Ave Maria or something referencing our Heavenly Mother. And after the mothers walk down the aisle, the bridesmaids, um, it, it can be done a couple of different ways, but the bridesmaids will be the next to walk down the aisle. And this can also be during the Ave Maria, or it can be something different depending on what the bride and groom decide. Once the bridal party has made it all the way down the aisle, you will most likely not be singing during the processional. I've seen this a couple of different ways, but probably 80 to 90% of the weddings that I do have just instrumental music for the processional. So you are not required to sing for that. So, so far we are singing for the prelude and we are singing potentially Ave Maria as the mothers walk down the aisle. Now that the bride has made her way up the aisle, we will begin the mass. The priest starts with an opening prayer and just like any other Mass on Sunday, we want to be sure that we are doing those call and responses, especially if the priest is chanting them. So when he says, the Lord be with you, we say, and with your spirit, and lead the congregation in that. After the opening prayer and the call and response, typically the priest will lead us in the Kyrie at Mass. This can also be an opportunity that you may need to sing, but oftentimes I've found that the priest usually leads that. We then move to helping lead the congregation in the Gloria. So we will sing that and everyone will sing along with us as a group. After the Gloria, we move to the Liturgy of the Word. And this includes the reading of the very first reading. And then it is our job to lead the congregation in the singing of the psalm. Now, there are very specific psalms that are sung for different special occasions. 
for the weddings, I have typically sung um, the Psalms, I wrote them down, um, Psalms 34, Psalms 103, Psalm 128, and Psalm 145. Those are typically the Psalms that I sing for weddings. Now, I'm planning to do another video of those Psalms specifically to help lead you guys and give you pointers on how to sing through those Psalms, so stay tuned. After the Psalm, the second reading is read, and then the Gospel Acclamation. This also is usually the Alleluia and very specific Alleluia sung for weddings in celebration of the wedding mass. Um, and then the reading of the Gospel. So the Gospel is then read and the priest will follow up with a homily before he does the nuptial rites. So after the priest finishes his homily, we move into the celebration of matrimony. This includes the address and state of intentions, the exchange of consent from the bride and the groom, and the blessing and giving of rings. So during this entire time, basically from the gospel acclamation to the end of the profession of faith and the intentions that would normally occur at a normal mass, you will not need to sing. This is a time where the bride and groom are featured and they are exchanging their vows. So it's a little bit of a break during the mass for the cantor. The next time that the cantor is required to sing is after the intentions and the beginning of the presentation of the gifts. So again, you have that nice long break between the homily and the presentation of the gifts, but that's when you will begin to sing again. This is typically a hymn that has been picked out by the bride or groom, and this is also something that could potentially be focused on communion and preparing our hearts for communion, um, typically a meditation hymn in that regard. After the presentation of the gifts concludes, we move into the Eucharistic prayer, and we will then begin singing the Mass parts, including the Sanctus or the Holy Holy, then we move it to the memorial acclamation, and then the great amen. Then we will move into the communion rite where we say or sing the Lord's Prayer. After that, we move into the nuptial blessing. So the priest will then bless the bride and the groom, and we do the sign of peace, and then we lead the congregation in the Agnus Dei or the Lamb of God. After the Agnus Dei, we move into the communion distribution, and this typically has two different songs for two different purposes. The first one is focused on communion, and I've often sung Panis Angelicus at this time, or another typical hymn that is very communion focused. The next song is during the meditation, and during this time, the bride and groom will often go and take flowers to set them under Mary. Now, this is a, a devotion to Mary that many couples do, and it is very appropriate to sing another Marian hymn. This would of, often also be a great time to sing the Ave Maria. So we have the first song focused on communion, and the second song is focused on Mary. Finally, after communion, um, the priest will give a final blessing to the bride and groom, and then the final blessing to the congregation, and will introduce the bride and groom for the first time, and then dismiss the congregation, concluding the Mass. The recessional, like the processional, is typically an instrumental piece. So I have very rarely sung a recessional hymn for a Catholic Mass, but it can be done. So let me know down below if you have ever experienced um, a sung processional or recessional. Um, leave me a comment down below and let me know if you've experienced that because I personally haven't. Um, so after that, you are finished singing for the Mass. It is a lot of singing, but it is so much fun. It is so much fun to celebrate the couple on their special day. 
That is the order of the mass for a Catholic wedding and when to sing, when not to sing. And it's important to remember as you are approaching cantering for a celebration of a wedding like this, to always be professional, dress well, dress appropriately, modestly, and dress as if you're a guest at the wedding. That's kind of my rule of thumb when I'm approaching, uh, preparing for a wedding like this. And make sure you're prepared practice lots. This is a special day for the bride and groom, and so we want to make sure that we make it special for them as well. And leave me a comment down below if you have any other thoughts or you have a favorite wedding song that you've sung for a wedding, and I will look forward to seeing you guys all next week. God bless you!